They got cats like Cassie and Stanley jumping 46 inches off the ground, bro. Chat looked like he giving me about 24. <laughs> Chat might got a two-foot vert, bro. And those little legs, I get it, bro. I know he can't squat one for nothing. Let me see. I'm not finding anything on the. They're not going. They're not going to list that. They're oh, he got a 39 inch vert. How you feeling? Seven, seven foot with a 39 is solid. Like 39. No, I'm, messing with, I ain't, I'm, I'm messing with. I ain't finding no vert. I'm I didn't find the vert. Yeah, I don't. They're not going to list that kid, vert, bro. <laughs> okay, that's how you. That's how you lose draft stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay that's. In my field of work, we call information like that classified. Okay, you don't, you don't, you don't leak that type of shit, boy. That's G fourteen classified. That's G fourteen classified. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's your favorite show. Favorite show. Get a bucket. I'm your host, Train. As usual, hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. As you can see, we got all the Duke gear. Oh, well, I mean, most of it. I ain't got my Duke shorts on on the socks, really. And I'm still waiting on getting the draw this whole time. Someone will give me a Christmas gift. Y'all can do that. Anyways, um. Why do I have all the Duke gear on, though? I mean, this is kind of like a very special episode. Hi, Key. Um, as you can see on the screen, I got my cousin, Sheldon. Sheldon, say what's up to the foot real quick, bro. What up, fam? Bet, bet. How's everything been with you, man? Cooling, cooling, brother. Cooling, man. Just adjusting back to life. You feel me? After this very eventful weekend we just had. So, but now everything is good. I'm feeling blessed. Big facts, big facts, bro. This was a very big weekend. Um, all around great trip. We got to do it again. Whole time I was looking at the uh, Duke UNC tickets. Uh, about six stacks each. Each ticket. Uh, so we probably just going to FaceTime and watch the game on TV like normal. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, hey, I, look. I tried it, though. I tried. I tried looking. Yeah, this parlay hit. We might be in there. <laughs> hey, oh, you know what? You know what? Some parlays might hit actually. A couple of them, I was like three off. We'll get into it another time, another day though. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, like I said, this is going to be a good one. So please stay tight because uh, we will have a lot of Duke information and a couple of uh, special topics going on as well. All right, so we're back with the motivational post. As you all know, uh, we're just going to say a quick little motivational speech and uh, keep it pushed right onto the show. We got to get you guys motivated. You know what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm going to get the ball rolling. And, uh, you know, you see the Duke gear. So we're going to talk about my man, Jay Will. That's right, Jason Williams. And uh, it's very simple. My man says, believe. Because his life has actually been pretty pretty weird. He actually uh, wanted to commit suicide after his uh, motorcycle accident. You know, he was the number two draft pick. He was actually supposed to be pretty good looking. I listened to it in all the Smoke podcasts. They were saying that, or Jamal Cropper was saying that, you know, he was going to take off. So, I mean just knowing that he was struggling with suicide and is actually open um, to sharing that. And the message that he wants to tell people is believe you got to believe in yourself. Don't get down. Don't take yourself out of that situation. Always keep pushing forward. You always got to believe in yourself. So for me personally, that was big. Um, and I think, you know, he, he could have gotten down really easily in the state. He just believed in himself and he's been successful pretty well. So that's my uh, motivational speech, but uh, a motivational post, but uh, Sheldon, what do you got for your motivation post we got? One, I want to commend you for bringing up Jay Will and the suicide talk. I think in the midst of, you know, with mental health becoming a rising and popular topic, um, I think it's important just to point out the strength it took for him to pull himself out of that dark place and to eventually be where he's at now. So I think that's dope. But um, for me, and um, one of mine, and it's it's really tough to pick one. But I'm gonna actually take it to football. I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with the Vince Lombardi joint. Um, he's got plenty. Vince has got a bunch of them. That dude was a man of words. But probably one of my favorite ones, and I gotta paraphrase, is he's like, I truly believe a man's finest hour and his greatest moment is that time when he's exhausted himself in a good deed. And he lies on the field of battle, victorious. It's one of them longest quotes, but the quote's basically about giving it everything you got and leaving it all out there. And, you know, as a competitor, man, I got to respect that. Um, and that goes, that goes with sports. That goes with life. That goes with 
you know, that kid that's struggling with this project or this exam or this deadline or whatever it may be, man, just giving it everything you got and, and finding a way to win, I think that is one of the most beautiful and rewarding moments ever. And even, even let's say you lose, even if you lose, yeah, it's going to hurt. Yeah, it's going to stay. <clears throat> but once you get over that pain and you recover from that disappointment, you can still hang your head high because you know you gave it all you got. So that's that's mine for that one. No, that's dope, bro. And it's crazy because like they kind of, like both of us kind of tie into one another because you got to leave it all on the floor, leave it all on the field. Now I wasn't even gonna bring up the whole like your your athletics um accolades until the end just because I wanted to show like you know like you're an athlete so you can kind of spot out that dog in you, but like. Like you said, you're an athlete, so like you appreciate that. And I think you also can appreciate you got to believe in yourself just because, like I said, both of them tie in together. So, I mean, like, like I, it was crazy how, like, they actually happened that we didn't plan that. So, I mean, that was that was pretty that was pretty dope and special, actually, I think so. So, I appreciate you for that one. That was a good one. I think we had two good ones, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, with that being said, uh, we are going to go on into the episode now. We got you motivated. Uh, now, let's get you energized a little bit. All yeah. right. So, we're back. <laughs> right back. So we're back and uh we got my cousin with me as you all know. So we're talking about Duke here, uh but he's the SME, right? Like I you know we both love Duke, but um I've only been to one game Duke related at camera. Like he's been there a little bit more, a little bit more than myself. So with that being stated, Sheldon just walk us through, bro. Like what's the energy? What's the vibe like when you're walking on Duke's campus, because like I said, you've been there a little bit more now. You know what? Let me give a quick backstory. Let me give the backstory to how I actually became a Duke fan, real quick. So, growing up in Durham, North Carolina, right? Mm -hmm. You have Duke fans, you have Carolina fans, you have NC State fans, you have you have all types of fans, North Carolina Central fans, right? And as a kid, I honestly did not care. Okay, I did not care. I liked them all. It was whatever. I didn't have anybody pulling me in no particular direction. But then in fourth grade, um, every Friday, as a community service effort, Duke students would come to my fourth grade class every Friday. We would spend the first half of the day being tutored, mentored, helped with homework, schoolwork, whatever. Then the second half of the Friday turns into kickball, dodgeball, basketball, Chess, okay. board games, whatever. I mean, they would, it was it was the dopest, funnest experience you could ever imagine. And right. that turned into that turned into kids going to cookouts at Wayne Manor. That's one of the dorms out there. Or that okay. turned into acapella concerts, swim meets, volleyball right. games, shit like that. So they were integration you with each with each other. Yeah. So I mean, I was, dude. I might have been nine, ten years old up in them dorm rooms playing with the kids, playing video games or whatever with the college kids, you know what I'm saying? So, my Duke fandom was, was literally like instilled in me. Like, that's that's where it happened. So, growing up, um, you know, obviously we were Duke fans. So, to get back sort of on topic with regards to just the Duke experience at Cameron, mm. I think they do a great job of just creating a, a almost a family environment. Um, mm. You never, you never ever, like, you never feel small in there. You know, even even when you, I remember him casually walking past Jay Wood, just mm -hmm. casually, and he, like, patted me on the shoulder or something like that, or, like, it was something real casual, real chill, but you would have thought we all knew each other. You know right. what I'm saying? I remember when Coach Gay got his 1,000th win, I went to the very next game. This was the Tyus Jones, you know, over to you. Mm -hmm. And after the game, Coach K and all the players like came out and sat at half court, and Coach K just talked like with everybody in the stands as if you would have thought we was in like a living room or something like that. Mm -hmm. And 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 it was it was just a really cool moment. So that's probably that's one of my yeah. that's probably one of my favorite things. But you know, Cameron's relatively old. It's not the right flashiest you know, arena or nothing like that, but mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those appreciation type of things, and, and I think everybody's, for the most part, on the same page when it comes to that. Yeah. No, I, I can concur on the whole family kind of, like, when, when, when we went, um, 
I didn't really feel like I was out of place, you know, like I felt like it was a, I was at a game that was comfortable. Like, uh, you know, like the people in front of us were like, oh, it's your first time? Oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, cool, man, appreciate it. Like, you know, like, it yeah. really felt like it was just a good overall experience and there was just no really hostility amongst the crowd. So, I mean, it was it was definitely a pleasurable experience. And I just listening to hear you and, to, and, and, and see how Duke actually interacted with you within your, like, early life and how it still kind of gives you that same family vibe it, it really just shows a level of consistency of genuineness because not i don't i don't know if everyone really does that like i could be wrong but that's not the norm i would think so uh, duke no, has a very my bad not to cut you off duke has a very unique welcoming energy they really mm. do it's a genuine welcoming energy is what you get there it doesn't it doesn't feel like like, it doesn't feel like there's a VIP section or nothing mm-hmm. like that. It doesn't feel, it just feels like, hey, we're all here together. Like right. You so, if you could say there's one thing that you would be, like, that's your, like, favorite about Duke, what would that be? I think that's an impossible question. But, no, <laughs> I say, you know what my favorite thing is? I'll say this. I know what it is. Probably mm-hmm. this. Being from Durham, we're a very prideful bunch, you know, full city. That's like our shit. We Durham is the most one of the most prideful people for it to be such a, a midtown, mid major town. But I really appreciate Duke bringing some international relevance to Durham. You know, you you go to China, people know where people know about Duke University, and people specifically know about Duke basketball. Right. Um, and it's it's a good look. We're relatively mm-hmm. known um, for great things around the world. And it's a relatively small school. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's not it's not a, a huge college in comparison to other schools, but right. school, yeah. it's, in, it's impact is felt. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I, that's probably my favorite thing, just off the top of my head. Maybe I'll think something else later, but that's okay. something I appreciate for sure. Okay, okay, okay. I got you then. I got you. That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope then. Um, we kind of tied into what I want to talk about next segment. So uh, that's a perfect transition. So what we'll do is we're going to cut here and go on to the next segment, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, stay tight because I'm sure you won't want to miss the next part of the episode. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I told y'all we're going to be back and it's going to be a little bit entertaining. Ah, a lot been entertaining, actually. Uh, well, at least if you're a Duke fan, you're going to like it. Because uh, we got a trivia question here. So well, questions. Let's pull. Let's pluralize it. I cannot talk today, Jesus. But here's the thing, Sheldon. I got about six questions here. Um, I want to see how many of these you can get right. Again, they're Duke related. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> with that being said, let's go ahead and get the ball rolling. Who holds the Duke three point record? Uh, probably, probably Reddick. I say that because one, he was money. And two, he wasn't the one and done. Like, he gave us multiple years. So, he had multiple years of being money. So, off the top of my head, I'll say ready. All right, yep, you got that right. You got that right. I had to start you off with a solid one, you know. Just don't want to get too hard just yet. I got you. So, um, next question, next question. The first championship for Coach K, what year was that? Oh, man. Um, either 91. I think 91. Yeah. You got it right. You got it right. All right. All right. Yeah. Me two for two out here. Me two for two out here. Staying strong. I like it. I like it. Uh, next question. Coach K, you know, he won, you know, a good championship, 91. When did he coach at Duke, though? What year was that? The first year? Uh... This back when Dean Smith was kicking our ass and they was trying to fire my man. He came in in the mid-80s, so I want to say 84. Off the top of my head, might have been 84. I could be wrong, but it started off rough for Coach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It started off a little rough. And in 84, I wasn't even thought of, you know. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how I did with that one. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't get that one right. He was, it was close, though, 1980, though. It was 1980. Uh, that's where they had him slated as. So, okay. yeah, 
But you know, in the fact you got it in the eighties, so that's not bad though. That's not bad. Four years off, that's not bad. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go on to the next segment. So please stay tuned. You won't want to miss it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we got the wacky folks. Actually, it is wacky, right? Like wacky isn't funny or whack e because you know is it whack and you know is we just not we ain't got time to deal with that. Um, <laughs> so Sheldon, I got one for you. Um, you know, we, you know him, you love him. He was on the Duke squad, of course. We got to keep it Duke related. Frank Jackson, Frank Jackson, not related, uh, not related to us. Um, how you feeling about his wardrobe, or his, not wardrobe, his uh, appearance? How, 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 how are you feeling about his appearance? Dude, I'm honestly concerned, okay? <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, <laughs> I'm concerned. Because the kid, Frank, can't be no more than 25. Right. And he looks thirty-seven. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I don't I don't know. And like I've always liked the kid. Um I wish he got more burn at Duke. He's had a mm-hmm. almost like a journeyman career in the NBA. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I remember he's in Detroit now, right? I think he's in Detroit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm casually watching a, a Pistons game for whatever reason. And I just look up and I see this forty year old man. <laughs> And it's Frank dog, and I'm like, what? The, like, are they stressing him out? Like, I know it's cold in the D, but damn, bro, like, what's going on up there, dog? So, I'm, I'm a little concerned for Frank, man. Like, I hope he's all right, dog. I mean, he, he's still hooping. He's in the NBA. He got a, you know, he got a lot more money than I do. So, I right. mean, he's doing well, but physically, that dude look like he's aging in dog years, man. Yeah, like, and, and don't get me wrong, you know, I I think we would all love to have Frank's, uh, his pocketbooks, um, but money's not everything, Chan, like, if you told me that I get a million dollars, ride the bench respectfully, um, and, and, and I look like that, like, uh, I don't know, because like you said, it looked like he was a, a, a 70s porn star, and like, <laughs> it looked like my man had done a couple of lines like real quick. I'm just saying, like Frank, it did not yeah. look good, buddy. Like, it, I'm glad you're looking a little bit better. You got the hair tie off. You know what I'm saying? You let the, sh- the stash go. Um, I mean, I'm glad. Like, you know, like, he's young. Maybe he wanted to experiment, try some things out. I don't know. But he um, looked like a recovering addict, bro. Like he looked like he had a hard life, though. Like he looked like he looked like he looked like the cousin. <laughs> To show up to Thanksgiving and you ain't seen him in a year, and y'all just glad he been clean for a couple weeks, bro. Like, that's how he looks. So he, he showing up, you know what I mean? Like speaking of money, he looked like I could loan him some money, like like until next week or something. He can check it for me. We will have uh, a go for the situation with Frank Jackson. Frank, man, Frank, Frank, it's all love, bro. We got nothing to love for you, dog. But I'm sure you can take a joke, so it's all good. Or we hope so. Or we hope so. Either way. Um, if not, it is what it is, bro. Facts, facts. Yeah, I mean, so I guess all we got to say is, uh, Frank, just say no. Um, but with that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go on to the next segment. Um, but hold on, real quick before we go. Is it wacky as in funny, or was it wacky for you? It's it's one of those laugh to keep from crying type of things. So I guess it's a little bit both, because I'm genuinely concerned. But I don't think I have to be concerned about an adult in the NBA. And if the worst thing that's ever happened to that guy is playing for the Pistons, then he's doing all right. So, I don't, you know, it, it's funny. It's funny. I, let's go with Wacky. We'll say Wacky. Okay. All right. Bet. Yeah. Bet. Yeah. All right. Well, we got a Wacky, ladies and gentlemen. So, we're going to go on to the next post. So, uh, our next, yeah, the next segment. So, uh, stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I told y'all we're going to be back. And it's going to be a little bit entertaining. Well, I've been entertaining, actually. Uh, well, at least if you're a Duke fan, you're gonna like it. Uh, Cause we got a trivia question here. So, well, questions. Let's pull. Out, let's pluralize it. I cannot talk today, Jesus. But here's the thing, Sheldon. I got about six questions here. Um, I want to see how many of these you can get right. Again, they're Duke related. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> with that being said, let's go ahead and get the ball rolling. This was kind of funny because you know the Lakers just changed their name from Staples Center to Crypto.com. Um. What was Duke originally called? It might As a matter of fact, called... I'll take I'll take two names. I, I'll I'll take hold one. On, I'll stop, take stop, one or two of them. Give me a second. Give me a second because I I know this, or at least I've I've read this before. Okay, right, give me a second. 
This is one of those things I haven't thought of in years because I haven't had to. Mm. But I want to say it was called something like Tarlington, Tarlington East or something like that. I could be complete. I don't know what I'm thinking of. But I do know that it wasn't always Duke University. <gasps> yeah, what so it, 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 it was at, it was first uh, Union Institute Academy, and uh-huh. then it was uh, Trinity Co- uh, College. Trinity. Maybe that's mm-hmm. I knew it. Maybe the T. I knew it was something. But that was an interesting fun fact for me, though. So yeah, I, yeah, I had yeah. to, yeah, I, had, I was like, ooh, that's a pretty good one. I like that one. I like that one. Next question, then. Um... When was Duke's first championship? What year was that? Basketball. Uh, you talking the pre-K era. <laughs> um, oh, man. I want to say like 1965. I'm going to guess. I'm going to give you an educated guess and say we was in the mid-60s when it the year I looked up was 1920. Oh, so yeah, I was could, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 1920 though, good God, yeah, I I didn't stand a chance. Though. Yeah, and fun was fact, it too, called you, Duke? was it even called Duke in 1920, or was it Union Institute? Nah, it was tri- it was it was Trinity. It was a little trick question because they technically roll under the umbrella of Duke. It was a trick question. It was a trick question. I I, I would have been surprised if you got it right. So, uh, next question, and final question. Um, now, of course, you know, Duke did charter the ACC, um, but how many other teams were a part of that to charter the ACC? I'm going to say nine. Nah, it was it was it was actually six. It was actually six. We had Maryland, North Carolina, Clemson, NC State, um, South Carolina, and Wake Forest. Mm. South Carolina, huh? Mm-hmm. They, okay. All right. They probably. I mean, they're doing their thing in the SEC, so I can't be mad at it. But that's the yeah. fact I didn't know. I didn't know South Carolina was originally in ACC. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a that's an interesting one. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, those are all the questions that we had. Uh, but you know what? You actually did a pretty good job. Though, so I ain't, I'm, I'm not even going to smoke if you asked a champ. Like, I was actually pretty impressed. Like, cause I, I had to look up a good amount of these. <laughs> so I was like, all right. Like the latter parts, I had to. I had to. I'm not even hold you. So yeah. uh, definitely kudos on that one. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go on to the next segment. So please stay tuned. You won't want to miss it. All right. So this is the. This is the segment I've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen, because we get to talk about Duke 2022. Um, again, as you know, we actually attended the game. Uh, it was a go. It's my first one. You know, it's weird because I'm a big fan. And you would think I would have gone earlier. I should have gone, and I'm gonna keep going from here on now. That's you get a personal, you get a personal, like get a bucket disclaimer. Trey will be going to a Duke game every year. I ain't going to say, Sheldon, if you want to come, you, you know you're more than welcome. I ain't going to have him do that, though. I ain't going to have him do that on, on video. Get me off on the on the, uh, on, on the cell. But how do you feel about this team right now? And, again, that's it. That's including Paolo and, uh, and his legal potential troubles. Um. All right, so one, I think I'm down for the annual Duke trip. Um, gives me an annual reason to return to my hometown. You feel me? I mean, so that's cool. Um, as far as the legal shit, honestly, bro, Coach K, Coach K grandson, um, he gonna wear most of that. Um, that what they charge Paolo with the aid and the bet. That's that. I mean, that ain't. That ain't nothing that's gonna stop nothing. I mean, he, he started and played two days later, bro, so I ain't worried about that at all. Like, that's not gonna affect nothing. Like, mm. and, 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 and fuck that punk ass cop for not letting them boys go, okay? <laughs> Let's just say that, bro. We in the 919, dog. You, hey, look, man, 
people have gotten away with far less, okay? That's what that you make a phone call to the proper officials and you get you your season tickets and you sit your ass down. Okay. This is <laughs> this is Coach K's grandson, my okay, boy. Uh, His final up. year. You locking up. We got we got we got people on on you know, we got we got people walking away and getting away with, 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 with far more. We, let's let, let's keep it. Let me not get too left on. It, you, yeah, you, know can, you can really get my blood boiled if you want to talk talk. But right. like, nah, I mean, I'm sure he's probably some Carolina fan trying to get his trying to poke his chest out there. But how do I feel about this team? Um, I like a lot of things about this team. One of my favorite things about this team is we're damn near impossible to game plan for. There is there is no situation where it's not like the other teams we've had um, where you could you might can focus and lock in on one player or one spot on the floor. You you guys try to take away the paint, that's cool. We can shoot. Damn near everybody in our starting five can shoot. Even even our centers aren't afraid to shoot. Even guys like John coming off the bench aren't afraid to shoot. You got to respect that. You can't just play zone this year and expect to give us trouble. Um, mm-hmm. I really, exactly. really, really appreciate what Wendell Moore has done. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you you clearly, I mean, one, he's clearly our leader. And mm-hmm. two, that kid has been in the lab. It literally elevated every single aspect of his game. Mm-hmm. And he's looking like the, like the real NBA player now. Um, right. Giving me Justice Winslow vibes. Mm-hmm. Probably a better pure basketball player than Winslow. Not quite mm-hmm. as athletic. Not quite. But if we're talking just from a skill standpoint, mm-hmm. I'll probably, I probably give more the edge. Um, mm-hmm. I like Paolo a lot. Mm-hmm. Paolo, Paolo is, I mean, he's right up there as far as any recruit we've ever had. He's just as good as any of them. I didn't know much about Kill at first when he mm-hmm. was coming in. I didn't know much about Kill, but right. he jumps off the screen at you. Like he mm-hmm. jumps off. He's big. He's strong. He's fast, and he's not scared of nobody. So, um, like I was, and then I tell people all the time, um, Roach, Roach is what I call our X factor. Um, yep. You know, he previously last year he struggled a bit at point guard. Um, this year started off weird with that tough matchup against Kansas. That kid from Kansas is nice. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Roach, he didn't, I mean, we won the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not Kansas, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know you're talking Kentucky. Kentucky. The kid from yeah. Kentucky is tough. Yeah. Uh, but we won the game, and he looked respectable, and he's continuing to improve. So right. I like Roach as our X factor. I think mm-hmm. his ability to play high-level point guard, that's the difference between us Elite Eight, Sweet Sixteen, and Elite Eight Final Four contending for a chip. We also have a lot of depth this year. A lot of depth. I appreciate the transfers that we got. I appreciate kids like Joey Baker staying around and mm-hmm. just sticking it out and just mm-hmm. coming in and making things happen. So all in all, I like this team. Um, we're not blowing people off the floor like uh, Zion Barrett, Reddick were, and Trey Jones were, but we look like a, we got a good blend of um, veteran experience and leadership along with young talent. You know what I mean? So that's probably here's my, my here's my here, here, Here's my thing. I, 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 I agree with the points. Um, I think Paolo's going to get his regardless. I think he may struggle at a little bit, but like it's not going to be anything alarming. I want to see if Keels's uh, shooting can continue because again, we're talking about young kids here. At the end of the day, like you know, they, they, yeah. they, 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 their play stock and waiver, especially if you, uh, especially when you, once you get conference play. And then Roach, I think we, like, like we both agree, uh, he is that X factor. He's pretty big because you know we were talking about it. and There is no backup point guard, so he's going to have to play well. I mean, we know that Wendell Moore can play point guard and and uh, Paolo can bring up the ball, but. I, I kind of want Roach out there as well too. I appreciate though that we can go deep because we can uh, and be versatile, have a large lineup, and be able to shoot the ball somewhat. And I do think though that our free throws, I am questioning it just a little bit. Like I want to make sure that we're consistent because uh, over the years we haven't been as good at the free throw line as we used to be. So I mean, that's like that. The, those things, those are some things I want to note 
and uh, look for going forward. But uh, outside of that, um, we're winning the championship. So uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to tell y'all, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, those are just a few things to like to to look out for. But I think we're, I think the biggest thing um, is going to be our um, our our Gonzaga game. So uh, with that being said, you know we will we will be talking about that just a little bit on the foreshadowing section. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. You know, get your take a little bathroom break. You know, get you something to drink or whatnot because uh, this one should be uh, pretty entertaining. All right. So look, we got the foreshadowing post. Um, I did tell y'all we're gonna talk about Duke and um, Gonzaga, but before we do that, though, just just before we do that, just quick second, quick second, quick second. My cousin is a is a uh, NFL fan, so you know I, I figured why not give a little foreshadowing about the NFL. So uh, Sheldon, with that being said, um, do you have like a foreshadowing, some things to come, or a one thing to come in the in in the future for this year? Right. Give me one second. Give me one second. Mm-hmm. Had to had to make a quick little, you know. Wardrobe adjustment, you feel me? How about them cowboys? Um, so let me just say this, bro. You know how cowboys have a a, a, a rep? Cowboys, not cowboys. Cowboys fans, rather, have a rep for being annoying, arrogant, ignorant, obnoxious, pompous. Yep, all that good stuff. Bro, I completely fucking agree. Bro, I hate cowboys fans. Bro, cowboys fans are like. <laughs> Bro, I was in like a, I was in some type of like Facebook group. I like accepted it. Like, okay, whatever, I'll join. Bro, these dudes are ignorant, arrogant, just jerks, bro. I said, no wonder nobody likes us, though. Like, I be getting dirty looks with this hat on, and now I see why. Like, cause I'm not like that. You feel me? I'm not uh, one of those. I'm not one of those ignorant fucks hollering Super Bowl every year, every right. year. I'm like, no, let's be honest. So. Now that I've given y'all the disclaimer, I, I've already, I mean, Vegas got my money. I think Cowboys <laughs> win it at all, man. I think Cowboys win it at all. We're going to be in L.A. at SoFi Stadium, and we bring it home that Super Bowl. We can literally beat teams in multiple ways. If we need to, if Dax hurt, and we need that defense to hold a team to under 20 points to sneak out a win, we can do that. If we need that defense to get turnovers and score, we can do that. If we need to run the ball on you, we can do that. If we need to take your top off, we can do that. Um, Dak's playing. Dak's one of the top quarterbacks in the league this year. Um, C.D. Lamb's explosive. Amari Cooper is an amazing veteran. Um, that young kid, Micah Parsons, is a dog. I mean, just an all-around nightmare for any offensive coordinator. He's he doesn't even consider himself a, a linebacker or a DN. He just considers himself a football player out right. there getting it done. Um, I love Diggs. Um, I really appreciate what Kellen Moore is doing, our offensive coordinator. We are the most complete team in the league. Um, um, you guys are a solid team this year. So, I mean, I, I, you know, usually something does happen later on to you guys. So, I mean, I, I'll see how it goes. I, I, it's more of a week by week uh, thing with you guys, but like we said, this is foreshadowing. So um, we'll see if that happens. If they do, the next year or so might be a little bit annoying. So um, wish you all the best out there <laughs> if that happens. But uh, how, switching over to college basketball, you know we we did get a little clickbait with this, so um, give the people what they want. Uh, Duke versus Gonzaga. How you feeling about it? Are we going to win? Is Paolo going to outshine Chet? And then, like, how are we going to treat Timmy? Like, there's so much stuff to worry about, bro. Like, how do you feel about that game? Gonzaga is probably the team that forced me to really start respecting West Coast basketball. Mm. Um, for years, for years, I just couldn't buy into it. I was just like, bro, we smoking y'all. <laughs> we smoking y'all. Y'all don't want that East Coast smoke, but Gonzaga has demanded that respect and earned it rightfully so. So shout out to them for that. Um, I mean, I'm gonna have my popcorn for sure. Facts, yeah. facts. Um, so 
now that we're back talking about kids, I'll be a little more um, sensitive with how I describe kids, right? But at the same time, I got to be honest. Um, I don't think Chet's very good. Um, I don't think he's very good. I think, well, no, I take that back. Chet is good. That's good. I don't think central number one drafter. I don't think so. I don't think so. I see a very, very unexplosive, slow, um, solid, skilled seven footer. But he has got to hit the weight room. He's too okay. small, and somebody's gonna hurt him. Okay. Um, a lot of but so, but he, he doesn't get you any don't, you don't, you don't appreciate, you don't, appreci- don't appreciate Chet's length. Here's the thing: it's not that Chet is an athletic. Um, I just think he has to. I like just you just got to hit the weight room a little bit because he kind of reminds me of a Kristaps Porzingis meets Kevin Durant in a sense where he might not have that athleticism, but how many seven footers you see out there that have that guard like ability who can still get you about six blocks in a game? I mean, again, once you like once he bulks up a little bit, because I think we've seen Christoph Porzingis shown that 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 frame it's it's a little bit tough to manage once you get over that seven foot. Hump KD is a, a is, is a special case, and he's not the athlete that and Chet isn't the athlete that KD is though. But you don't think that based on his skill and length um, and versatility that Chet could be? Dude, I don't know what's in Chet mentally. I don't know where he's at mentally. If he if he's mentally tough and mentally disciplined, and he's committed, he's got a high ceiling. Okay, he, right. And, 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 and but I mean, he he would have to. Put it to you like this, man. The improvements Wendell Moore had to make to be an NBA player mm-hmm. and and be somebody, I think, is less than what Chet Holmgren needs. Honestly, I I think he' about to get abused, though. I think, and I think now that kid Timmy, what's his, mm-hmm. what's Timmy's last name? I think I know you're talking. No, about his last Timmy. name is Timmy. Drew is Drew Timmy. Drew Timmy. Okay, he got two mm-hmm. first names. He one of them. But you know what? I, that that kid, no, that kid tough. But, like, Timmy was going off that game. Like, he just, like, because, mind you, Timmy had a bad game against Alcorn. So, they just flip-flopped. Like, to me, when I look at Chet, and I want to compare him to a Paolo, um, the thing about this right now is, in the college game, you need skill. Like, if you go up against Syracuse, and all you do is you try to run and gun, and it's always transitioning your team, well, you're, you're probably going to lose because you don't know how to play half court. And with Chet, I think he can battle Paolo well enough. I mean, they, they, they played against one another. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like I'm sure in the circuit, like, they've gone up against one another before. His length helps out. His, 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 uh, the skill that Chet has, I think that helps out as well. So when we go up against them, one, we got to bring it from start to finish. Uh, and then two, we can't sleep on someone like Chet. I think Timmy is going to try to come out the gate. Um, but for real, for real, if I'm, if I'm Gonzaga, I'm trying to make sure Chet has that, uh, that chemistry, uh, that, 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 that confidence. Because if he's confident, they're tough. They're tough to beat. So, I mean, and I think Timmy can personally, uh, get Mark Williams out there personally. Um, that's just me. He's, he's a little bit more skilled in that area. And in college, he's the better player right now. So. I think I, I think Gonzaga I think Gonzaga is going to be tough. This could be a situation where they get us early, and then who knows? Maybe we play again in the um, in the uh, fi- in the mat- in the finals and win. Or this could be a 2015 situation where we played Wisconsin twice and we ended up winning the championship against them. So I mean, who knows? This the, I I would like to appreciate um, yeah. that if that happens, but. Yeah. Uh, I but think, yeah, I, think it's, I think it's going to be a good game. I don't. Mm-hmm. Chet just Chet 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 ain't I'm not a I'm not a believer, man. Right not right now. Like like I say, Chet can he can he can dribble. He yeah. he does he does he to me, he is a tall, skinny kid who does things pretty well. Okay. I don't see nothing that he's great at yet. Okay, like 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 if you get him to this position, you get him to this spot, he's great here. Put it to you like this. Tell me what's great about Chet without telling me he's seven foot. Blocking, length, um, versatility, uh, the potential, 
Um, he's a solid shooter. Like he he's a he's a he's a quality player, my boy. Like he he's not he, he's not a top he's not a he's not a, a potential number one pick for no reason. Okay. All right. All right. I but there, I, but there is always injuries around big men, and I do think Paolo has the advantage um, over Chet right now. So, and honestly, as long as Paolo works, then he should be able to continue to have that that, that advantage. But if he doesn't, like like Ben Simmons didn't, then eventually Chet will just overlap him because you know hard work eventually pays off, and uh, you got to work hard regardless. So Chet has to work on his body. Uh, Paolo has to work more so on the skill, but um, overall, these should be two diaper dandies, as Dick Vitale said. Um, Who do you think more skill? Who do you think between the two? Yeah. Um, depends on how you define skill. If you're talking about skill, skill, if you're talking about overall skill, um, I would say Paolo, just because I think he can play a little bit more on the perimeter. Um, when I say Chet's more skilled, I'm talking about more so on like the scoring aspect. I think maybe he can be better. Um, at the rim a little bit, just again because of his length. Like he's lankier than Paolo, but Paolo can also jump higher too. So it's like it's a it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a little tough one. But I would go Paolo long story short. Bro, Chet Chet be touching the rim, and he just be standing on his tiptoes, bro. Mm-hmm. So if we're talking about potential effectiveness, mm-hmm. if you can do that, you're going to be effective. But the mm. problem with that is you got to be able to get to that spot for one, two. Um, bro, he doesn't jump. I'm I'm very very interested to know what Chet Brothers is jumping. Like I'm very interested to know that if it it looked like he don't get off the ground, bro. <laughs> it looked like he it looked like he not getting we like we. But I mean, you got to think. We got cats like Cassie and Stanley jumping forty six inches off the ground, bro. Chet looked like he giving you about twenty foot. <laughs> Chet might got a two foot vert, bro. And those little legs, I get it, bro. I thought he can't squat one for nothing. Let me see. I'm not finding anything on the. They're not go. They're not gonna list that. They're oh, he got thirty nine inch vert. How you feeling? Seven, seven foot with a 39 is solid. Like 39. No, I'm, messing I ain't, I'm, I'm messing with you. I ain't finding no bird. I, I didn't find a bird. Just, yeah, I don't, they're not going to list that kid, bro. bro. <laughs> okay, that's how you That's how you lose draft stuff, okay? <laughs> that's, in my field of work, we call information like that classified, okay? You don't, you don't, you don't leak that type of shit, boy. What's the that's G14 classified. That's G14 classified. <laughs> Hey, once you once you find out he barely getting two feet off the ground, but they ain't gonna want to come near him. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, bro. That kid don't jump. I, um, I'm very very excited that we have to go to Gonzaga to play yeah. at Gonzaga. That's my good that, road game. It's a yeah, good road great, game. Good task for us. And I appreciate them for having us. Thanks for mm-hmm. having us. We're happy to be here. <laughs> You know, because it is going to be a good game. It's going to be mm-hmm. a good game. Um, mm-hmm. um, I don't know as much about their team, but I know they're very well coached. They're very well disciplined. Um, they mm-hmm. play hard. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a good game. Uh, I think we got Duke winning low key just because off off the fandom, off the brotherhood, off that good stuff. Uh, but this one will be an interesting one. Uh, but I think it's safe to say. Um, I think you would appreciate this one. It's one of my favorite movies, and it's probably one of your favorite Cowboys of all time. But in the words of Michael Irvin, Gonzaga, it's good spanking that ass, dog. Um, but we're going <laughs> to leave it off with that. <laughs> we're going to leave it off with that. Sheldon, bro, I prom- I appreciate you coming on to the show, my guy. Uh, we got to get you up here again because, uh, you know, I do want to do a couple more episodes. I got a couple ideas, so hopefully we can get you back on the show. You know, time is very important, though, to you, so we got to get you scheduled up properly. But people will make sure – Get Sheldon back up here at some point in time. Sheldon, before we go, do we have? Do you have anything you want to say before we go? Thanks for having me, bro. This is actually pretty fun, honestly. I mean, we've been talking sports all our lives, bro. So it's just being recorded, honestly. So. Big facts, big facts. No, no, I, I, like I said, bro, I appreciate you coming on to the show. This is big, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, this is this is like one of the reasons why I'm actually like a Duke fan. Like, like you know, what I'm saying, like you know that one cousin you always just to try to emulate growing up and stuff like that, like. 
that was him. So, you know, he's a Duke fan. Boom. Oh, he's okay. I'm one too. Like, and we just kept this train rolling. So that's why I'm glad you were able to be on the show, bro. I appreciate you. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all had a good one. Uh, please leave your comments, questions. Uh, if you're trying to DM anybody on the episode, let me know. I got you. We get you the plug. I know somebody who knows somebody. Uh, but look, hope you all have a good one and uh, stay safe. Take care. We're still here, and as, as you can see, we're at the back end of the show. No pun intended, but look, hope you all enjoyed it. And before you go, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow the IG account, share the content to anybody who's anybody, and most importantly, leave your thoughts and comments below. But I gotta go back and play Buddy in 2K, so let me unmute him real quick. Excuse me. Hey, boss, I'm back. Nah, you better catch this word. You know we get buckets around here, Clip.